Okay, I was cut off in my last video, but we are on week two. We're on day four for unit eight. So day five, you're going to assess. And then you have that cross-text connection lesson, which is lesson 14. You're going to be comparing two texts on the same topic. on the same topic. And then your writing lesson yesterday, or day four, you're planning your narrative, and then um, narrative point of view. And then so the next day is your writing lesson, is planning your actual story. So it's lesson 15, and you're planning the actual story. So that is week two. Okay, and week three, use blue. We have that nonfiction selection. So it's all nonfiction. It's called the Tropical Rain Belt. Our phonics focus is going to be diphthongs. T-I-P-H and we've got our list down at the bottom of our TRS cloud downpour moisture point shower soil, south, and sprout. Our language focus will be past tense verbs. And now your day one, you're going to um, do that first read. You're going to introduce the language and the spelling. And then instead of analyzing the prompt, your first writing assignment, now they're starting their drafting. It's going to be lesson four, beginning their firsthand account. Jumping to day two, the kids are going to do their second read. Annotate, go over any kind of vocabulary, and then jump into that close read lesson, which is three and five key details and main idea. And then in writing, it's going to be lesson number seven, which is incorporating research. So now that they've drafted, they're going to start weaving in their research that they found in week one. Day three, you're going to revisit that extended read, Tropical Rain Belt, and you'll do another close read lesson. And it's lesson six is the next one. It's interpret graphic features, so it's analyzing the sidebar. Analyze sidebar. So what information you can get from that sidebar. And then you're going to go over your phonics and language in context using that word study text, and that's predicting hurricanes. And that lesson can be as long or as short as you'd like it to be. It could even not be a lesson. It can even just be in a center. Um, and then your writing lesson that day is going to be lesson 10, using temporal words and phrases to signal order of events, because they are writing a narrative. So it's coming up with introductory phrases and signal words. It's going to show sequence. So I guess they'll go back to their draft and kind of add that in. in. Day four, your close reading lesson is going to be that Analyze Connections lesson, that 3.3 standard, or 0.3 for RI, um, which I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. Analyze Connections within a descriptive text. Or it could be that lesson that, that examines like cause-effect or sequencing or... Um, Compare, contrast, analyze, connections. And then your writing that day will be incorporating non-literal language. Okay, so we learned about non-literal language in week one using the poem, the metaphors. So now they want to 
incorporate that into their writing. That sounds fun. Day five, after you assess, and um, the day five assessment for week three is that really long unit test. I never do it on day five. There's no time to get to the other stuff if you're doing that. Um, I like to break that up over time. And um, honestly, the weekly ones are more valuable to me than those unit ones. I do like the writing from the unit ones. So sometimes what I'll do is I won't give the unit and I'll just give the writing prompt from it where they're um, using two texts to write, um, like compare, com do comparative writing, um, or I just won't give it. It's up to you. Um, and then your close read cross text connection lesson is going to be comparing two texts on the same topic. So that's the same as the week before. And then your writing lesson is your closure. So bringing closure to a narrative. So notice how after all of those writing lessons for all three weeks, your research, there's still never like a publish, a day where they're publishing. So be mindful of that. If you do want them to take it to publish, um, by the end of week three, they will have finished their draft. So you might wanna um, take that into consideration when planning out, you know, your time that you're working with. So that's all three weeks for Unit 8. I will take pictures and upload it to the Unit 8 album. Um, for me, I, like I said in my last video in the beginning, I tend to focus more on NGSS than all of these reading standards. So I may or may not get to these close reading mini lessons. Um, but these texts are good for making those connections to NGSS. Um, I did make a... PBL assignment that's on my TPT shop <clears throat> to do alongside Unit 8 um, that I feel connects well to our Earth Science standards. Um, so what's included in that, I'm so excited, what's included in that is their prompt. So they have to plan their ideal vacation. So with summer vacation coming up, they have to find a location that they think would be a good for their family vac vacation this summer and you know convince their parents that it's the best destination for their trip. Um, they have to research the climate, the weather, the geography, and then the attractions. So the attractions is not standards based, but it's kind of fun. Um, the climate, they have to know the climate zone, the average participation, um, precipitation, temperature, and they have to be able to graph it since that is one of our science standards. Dogs! For weather, they'll have to examine what the weather looks like and understand how that's different from climate. And then for geography, they'll have to um, look into like the natural landforms around the area or um, also like the natural disasters or hazards. So for third grade, a big standard is natural hazards and how we can, as humans, reduce the impact of natural ha disasters on our geography. Um, and also I attempted to kind of have, um, have them discover what that connection might be. So based on what that region's landforms are, that might influence what their disasters are. So kind of see that connection there. And then what are some fun things to do there? So for climate, and then I also tried to um, weave in websites. So it's more research-based using the online sources. Um, and so I've gone through these websites and I've done it myself, but of course preview just in case. Um, it, this one is a Google site, just a random Google site that someone made that breaks down the different climate zones. And um, so they have to read about what's climate, how is it different from weather, which is right on the home page. Once you go to this, the first thing the kids will see is a description of how it's different. And then um, they get to click on the sidebar what their climate zone is, um, where is it normally found in the world, describe the seasons, what's the temperature, average temperature, and what's the average precipitation. Then the next student sheet is weather. So they're using the weather website and they have to graph a week and they do that by um, going to the weather website, 
typing in their their destination like Honolulu for example and then um, they have to pull up the their summer month from 2017 so like July for example and see what the weather was then and then graph it for a week and then come up with like a um, itinerary for their parents what they should bring um, the graphing because we have a big graphing standard so they're graphing for each season precipitation and um, um, temperature and they can find that information on the same website and again it walks the kids through it like how step by step what to click on to get the information um, and then the geography so landforms their natural disasters and the impact and then the attractions, what to see, what to do. And then I made a little Unit 7 connection. So like what, um, what's this place known for? Uh, what are some symbols that might represent this location? So if they choose, you know, Oahu or whatever, they might say Pearl Harbor and then weave in that, con that um, connection there, whatever. There's lots of possibilities with that. And then there's a student rubric checklist. And then I also made a rubric for the teacher which is based on these standards so they're third grade standards for science and so that's it that's these are the teacher forms this is the teacher form and then finally what do they do with this research that's really up to you because it's PBL so you want them to be like representing their learning in whatever way they want but I created a template for um, a travel brochure like they have to come to school dressed up as a travel agent and they're convincing their parents that this is the best location so uh, this is their cover and then the first page is their climate then the next page is weather and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna take pictures of all my kids and then have them like you know being a weather reporter and then we'll glue it in after they fill out the forecast for that week of their vacation. So that's why there's that white space there. And then check out, oops, check out these landforms. Look out for these natural disasters. And then the attractions, be sure to check out. And it's like a little um, camera screen. So it shows like what you should go and check out and take pictures of. So that is my project for unit eight that I'm really excited about that can be found on my TPT and as I'm doing with this with the kids I will fill all of this out also I'm going to be doing it with them at the same time and I think I'm going to choose Hawaii and tell them that they can't choose Hawaii so I don't have a million kids going to Hawaii and so as I'm getting it done I will post pictures of my own so you guys can use them as examples in your own class too. So that's it. That's what I've got for you. Unless there are any questions, then we're done. And then I'm always available on all my channels. Just send me a message. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I'm commuting about 45 minutes a day now, so that takes up a chunk of my, chunk of my time, but I can still get back to you all pretty quickly. And let me take pictures of these before I forget. You're welcome, Emma and Michelle. I'm really excited for our upcoming planning days, those workshops, and meeting you all in person. And Leanne, before I forget, here's Brittany's email address. So anything relating to registration or um, the hotels or like how to pay for your spot, 
just email her and she will let you know waitlist all that information and there you go she should get back to you pretty pretty quickly she was she went on a vacation last last week I think but she's back now so she'll be easily available all right you're welcome Hi, Elise. I'm done. <laughs> I'm signing off. You're welcome, Nina. Have a good week, you guys. I'll talk to you soon.